Dr. Doug Holmes, I'm an ear, nose, and throat surgeon here in Raleigh, North Carolina. I have a private practice in all aspects of ENT, medical and surgical care, with a special interest and expertise in sinus care. And that special expertise involves balloon sinuplasty as a surgical intervention for sinusitis, chronic sinusitis, recurrent acute sinusitis. But even more important to you, I'm a retired Air Force Colonel. 30 years as a flight surgeon, through medical problems, through administrative problems. So I certainly understand what you go through as a flyer. Uh, tonight, uh, talking about uh, Barrow sinusitis, uh, which is the squeeze that you might get in your sinuses when you're flying, specifically on descent when you feel the pain and pressure in your sinuses and talk about exactly why that can happen. Now, Wilbur and Orville here in this replica of the right flyer never had the opportunity to experience that pain because they didn't achieve the altitudes and the pressure changes that occur when we fly. So uh, when you take off uh, and go up to altitude, you obviously know that there's less pressure in the atmosphere. And all the air in our sinuses comes out the small little openings into our nose and equilibrates equal pressure. That's not hard to happen. That also happens with your ears. Air comes out of your ears down to your station tube. The problem is, is upon descent. If you're a commercial pilot, you know that's when all the babies start crying because of the pain that they're feeling in their ears. And if you've ever flown with a cold and get the pain in your sinuses, you know when that's tough for your flying. So upon descent, uh, coming back close to the earth where the pressure is higher, air then has to go up the eustachian tube to the ears and also up back into your sinuses. And if that can't happen, there's a relative, then there's a relative vacuum which causes the pain and the squeeze and potential bleeding in your sinuses which may end up having you grounded for weeks at a time. We now have technology to investigate the potential blockages of your sinuses and to fix them quite quickly and easily with balloon dilation of the openings, so-called balloon sinuplasty. Our office here uh, has a CT scanner in-house. So we can provide quite confidential evaluations, CT scans, and if appropriate, intervention on the same day to relieve you of your problem. What is balloon sinuplasty? It's basically a procedure that involves an angioplasty of the sinuses. Angioplasty is opening up blood vessels with a balloon catheter. Instead of going through an open heart procedure, one can put a vessel into the vessels of your heart, can put a balloon into the vessels of your heart, and expand that balloon and reestablish blood supply through a narrowed area. This similar concept has been applied to your sinuses in balloon sinuplasty. So a catheter is placed into the sinuses, a balloon is inflated, and the small opening that caused problems and blockage is now wide open so that pressure changes can occur quite easily from the sinus into the nose. It addresses the cause of the problem. It just doesn't make an end run. We dilate this, sometimes uh, removing some thin bone and making that larger so that the sinus isn't subject to sinus blocks when flying. How's it done? It can be done with your weight, 
sedated or under general anesthesia. An endoscope is used in the nose to view the openings to the sinuses. A small lighted catheter is placed into the opening into the sinus, and the position is confirmed by turning down the lights and viewing the light within the sinus, either in your cheek sinus or in your frontal sinuses. A catheter is then guided over that small lighted wire. It bridges the gap across from the sinus into the nose, and the balloon is inflated, enlarging that opening. The schematic of this is uh, demonstrated in these slides, in which the lighted catheter is placed into a frontal sinus where there is a lot of mucus, which is the green area. The upper right shows the actual viewing in the operating room. When this is confirmed to be placed correctly, then a balloon catheter is placed into the sinus, bridging the gap, and is inflated. When this is inflated, the sinus opening is now large, and any fluid within there can exude. A large opening is there. Pressure changes can be tolerated without problems. We have a short video which shows the procedure in a maxillary sinus, which is the cheek sinus, and this particular one's on the left, where the catheter and guide wire is placed around behind a small mucous membrane area. The opening is identified, balloon is placed, and the area is dilated. And it happens just that fast. If you think this would be helpful for you, if you'd like a confidential evaluation and treatment, please call us or view our images on our web, www.drdougholmes.com. Thank you.